Hello and welcome to Iron Viz. My name is Danica Harrod and I'm Tableau's Corporate Marketing Manager of Community Content and Events. Iron Viz is the world's largest global data visualization competition, with entrants from all over the globe competing for the title of finalist. This year's theme for finals was education, and our three competitors had 20 minutes to build a viz that would be judged on three criteria, analysis, design, and storytelling. I'd like to introduce you to finalist CJ Mays and his sous visor Doris Kopik, who will be walking you through CJ's final build. CJ and Doris, take it away. Thanks, Danica. All right, CJ, you ready? Ready, let's do it. Seems like right out the gate, you know, you had your whole organization and downloading everything. Can you tell me a little bit about um, what was going through your head at the moment? Uh, I thought that shaky arm. Yeah. I always compare it to when you're first sitting your first ever driving test and, and your legs shaking on the clutch control. Um, I just shake the shake the nerves out my arm. But um, I'm just thinking about the the order and the practice I've done things in. You'll see I had three different data sources, and that steered from my preparation. I think that enabled me to to split the different sections easier in my mind to focus on where certain things come from. Um, whereas I think the others uh, had done it all from, from maybe one data source. And a quick tip that I initially used was relabeling everything. So you'll see that all my different calculations straight away, I type in number one for the first layer, and then I've appended the, where it goes. So you'll see the labeling of one path, one three detail means it goes on the first layer and the third layer on the detail, as well as um, uh, easy naming conventions of, of color and things like that. And for me, that takes the burden out of saying, okay, here I am building the, the polygon outline. Okay, so I need to go and find whatever label that might have been, or if I'm, I'm plotting life expectancy, the thought of, okay, I need to drag life expectancy onto column, it takes away all that stress, and I just put it straight onto the column field. Nice, that sounds really organized and um before we go into how you did all that i'm just watching what's going on here and i see you know you were the first one to have something so visual straight out the gate um do you want to talk a little bit about you know your your map yeah <laughs> the, the map got mixed reviews uh, and I, I can understand why for, for me see i'm this final so showing a bit of technical flair was really important to me if you think about some of the previous IMBIS finals, a lot of people remember uh, Ludovic's uh, circle and radial charts. Uh, I, I like technical difficulty and uh, I wanted to bring an element to that. Uh, as for the metrics themselves, it, as, as we progress through the chart, you'll see why and how I've, I've built things. So there's the technical elements of, of actually doing it and uh, the multiple data densifications as we, as we go through. But what I really wanted to focus on with this chart is actually the positive attributes of, of Africa's um, current rates, so showcasing the purple, as well as that positive change. And you'll see at the bottom, uh, vaguely, I, I don't know how it renders on the screen, but that's actually a pink polygon as a kind of a color reference to South Africa, which becomes a um, the kind of more granular level of, of case study within my viz. Um, and I, I use certain attributes like that, as well as a, a circle feature to showcase those that are above um, average um, literacy rate. Yeah, I remember, um, you know, there was a lot of technical difficulty, as you said, on how you came to build this, so do you want to go through a little bit of the detail of um, all the, I think it's your favorite word by now, trigonometry that you used? Yeah, yeah. so the initial base is actually joined in separately. So those polygon lines that will be trigonometry and that's realistically you're taking a bunch of random points that you can create yourselves and rank them, find the angle between them and then you'd have a circle and you can divide that into a specific shape. And then all I've done is invert it to a new point and then transpose those elements outwards for each of the different uh, countries. The gauge itself, there's probably easier ways to make it where you could 
be some sort of uh, donor, I suspect. But for the gauge chart I create, for each uh, granular level of, of row record, I'll split that and make 100 more for it. So for each percentage point going round, I'll then union that on itself again and expand outwards, as long as my X and Y values outwards, to be able to create, um, theoretically, 200 points for just that one value, and then align outwards uh, based on the union. So table one, union to table two, and that will be on the path which um, joins the points outwards. So it's actually 100 lines going like that radially. Yeah, crazy. Bit, I bit creative. A Maybe a little bit overkill, but I enjoy it's it. Iron Viz. Yeah. Nice. And um, can you tell me a little bit about your design choices? Like, how did you decide on this um, map that looks like grapes per country? And I don't want to say a um, bunch of grapes because that was one of the shade uh comments that got thrown at us but uh <laughs> how did you come to that design the, the whole great thing probably came back to to bite me a little bit didn't it but i think it's you know it's a good good piece of banter and whatnot and um, but the, the, the whole notion it once i built it i was like oh wow like it kind of looks a bit like a bunch of grapes so then my violin chart was kind of this kind of like squished fruit style and Everyone knows the classic song, I've heard it from the grapevine, and I was like, wow, that ties so nicely into this idea of misconceptions. So it was kind of like an ironic play, and it kind of came together as the, the whole general feel of it was misconceptions, newspaper-type design in the background, and then this kind of fruitful play throughout. And I thought it, I thought people might like it but I guess it's one way or the other I thought it was really creative and I liked your you know your whole design ended up being really detail oriented um but can you talk a little bit more about that newspaper you know how come you decided on that and was that inspiration yeah so I constantly go to Tableau Public for design inspiration and I think from that influence, it, it kind of came to mind of you telling this story it's more about misconceptions. And in newspapers, you tend to take um, the newspaper as gospel, right? Um, so that was kind of in the background as well as having read the Hans Rosling book. But the newspaper feel, I, I knew I wanted to make a static viz. And if we do later talk about things I'd do differently, maybe that's probably an element that, that didn't work so well for me. But a newspaper is a static biz. And then I had my focal points of my charts. So initially you look at the middle chart and the right chart um, necessarily. And then you read from left to right across the page. And so when I was presenting my visit at the end, I wanted to present kind of left, left to right. We see the relationship between these two things. Wow, look at this focal piece of the violin chart. And then we'll look at the, the tile map for a, a different level of detail that's underneath that. Nice. And while we're on the violin chart, actually, now you're pulling it into the dashboard, can you talk a little bit more about how you came to the idea and how you ended up building it? I know you, you had a couple practice builds that you did. Yeah, so with all of these charts, you end up building initially some analysis charts around it, and then you end up building the, the final version. And so I will have looked at uh, the extremes of the different life expectancies of countries. Uh, I would have plotted them, different variables uh, against one another. You'll see that I've only used actually two different measures within my uh, final viz, but there was actually a lot of other fields and whether that again works against me or for me, from a, maybe a storytelling perspective, I'm not sure, but the, the violin chart came about from playing around with different measures against one another. And I saw, wow, okay, we have this element of a measure over time, but a box plot, which I was initially looking at, is quite a static view. So you can have the most recent version, 
or you can have, you know, at any given year. And for me, stylistically, I wanted to go down a design concept I hadn't done before. So I've never created a violin chart before now. And I thought, wow, it's come out really nicely. I followed a, uh, Liam Holland's blog on it. But then I thought, how can I add my own kind of twist to this? And that notion of comparing previous with current metrics, um, it really stood out to me how the shape of the violin chart changed. So what you will see, uh, obviously we moved on slightly, but if you go back to the, the chart itself, you'll see the shape of the continent change. And so that really stood out to me, the, the acceleration, but also the notion that, okay, your extremities aren't actually what they used to be. So it's kind of a collective shift moving upwards. And I, I thought that was really nice. And then again, using the, the use of color to, to highlight the more recent record in the polygon versus the dual axis of the previous record of the line um, to show, show that shift over time. Nice. And speaking of color, and again, you had such detailed use of color on your dashboard. Can you talk a little bit more about the details here on the scatter plot and how you highlighted South Africa in color? Why yeah. did you come to that? So, yeah, the, the gray dots in the background will be different countries um, comparison um, for each of the individual years, but they're not the main focal point of what I'm trying to show. What I wanted to show was the general relationship between the two to, to start with, but also South Africa, I've used the, the light pink line um, specifically as South Africa was my case study. So when we go back to the dashboard, come on CJ, build this quicker. When we go back to the dashboard, you will see that I've actually included some different methods of showcasing what colors relate to what. So I will have used within the original summary, uh, a pink background for the word South Africa. You will see it in the title on the continent, there's a small pink mark, as well as the second chart next to the axis, there's a, a pink reference to show the change for South Africa's life expectancy. There we are, we can see at the top next to the title, um, South Africa in the top right, we've got a pink mark there again for a, a color reference point, as well as uh, on the axis in the background, I put a, a gray to a pink mark on, on the life expectancy, because obviously using the violin, you lose some of that more granular level of detail of all the different countries themselves as well as finally the, the light shaded pink on, on South Africa. There's also a couple of other color elements that I think people perhaps might have missed out on which is the, the use of the yellow in the from the grapevine and the misconceptions. I highlight the different misconceptions in, in each section as well. Yeah, that's right. I really remember the first time when we were looking through the draft, that was what stood out to me was um, your use of color and the use of detail. I thought it was really cohesive, beautiful design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for me, having like been in the community and creating public visits, you pick up on these smaller design things that I think go a long way, whether they necessarily translate on a bigger stage when you're presenting that's that's you know a learning point for myself um and what the others particularly did well was that kind of animated view or you're moving with the story mine was a very static view um is that something you change if you could do it over again um yes yes i i would i would i would change the flow of the viz I think this is, this is, it sounds like I'm teaching my own trumpet, but this is a good Tableau public quiz. And I think people in the community would understand what I mean by that. It's not necessarily a storytelling quiz where you're presenting on stage. And I would, if I was to, to amend a few things, like what I would love to see, and some people would call it overkill, but I would love to see an animated version of this violin chart where you see the progress over time until it reaches that final stage. Things like that would be pretty exciting. Maybe I'll go away and, and look at the data set again and play with that. But yeah, it really missed that. Okay, what's the impact? Where's the, like, wow, like you just kind of moved on 
flowed through the story. I would change that and maybe a few other things, but yeah, I don't regret it. I like what I produced in the end. I mean, it, one of the top uh, tabloids in the world. So definitely created a beautiful and, you know, compelling story. I'm not just saying that just because I'm your Sue visitor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, but no, I mean, it was really a great work. And, you know, as Jock said in the, in the judging with great, you know, power comes great responsibility regarding animation and action. Sure, it can be, as you said, kind of hard to see a bunch of details. On the other hand, you have to use it wisely. So I'm sure you would have found a way um, if that's yeah. something you wanted to do. Another thing that I'd probably change, and we're coming into like the final few minutes, I think, and I had a lot of time to think. Very difficult to, to know generally what time your build is. I think when I was practicing it, started off my first ever build was an hour long and then managed to trim it down to about 18 minutes and i thought oh wow this is this is going to be tight i want a minute just to make sure if i break something because i was very nervous about the reference bands um that i had enough time but i ended up with about two and a half minutes left um, and you'll see that i've actually made a mistake on the far right i haven't dragged something onto detail so there's a green mark where it should actually expand out onto some of the other countries um, but if i was to perhaps use that time more effectively. What I really loved about what Kimley did was she added in alt text and she actually brought in a lot of her text on her dashboard, um, within the dashboard itself. Um, jury's out on whether it's cheating using background text or not, but I think given that I had an extra two and a half minutes, maybe I could have made my uh, bands uh, on the sheet itself, and maybe brought in some, some extra elements that really kind of elevate the vis in that sense from an accessibility point of view too. Can you, for those in the audience that maybe aren't aware, can you clarify a little about um, what you mean by text and alt text and accessibility, how that comes okay. together? Yeah, sure. So um, not everyone can read the dashboard in the same way. And there's various ways that if you have a screen reader, a screen reader can't necessarily read a image um, especially an image that contains text within it because it's saved as an as a image file. And so if you use uh, Tableau's native text boxes, it does recognize it. And so from an accessibility point of view, not necessarily everyone will be able to uh, read what's in my background image. So adding some alt text lets the person know what the image is, um, I guess it doesn't know the full amount of text that I've put on this dashboard. Um, so um, anything you can do to, to help from that point of view, as well as there's loads of different ways you can help for better accessibility, uh, especially passing your colors through a, a um, colorblind checker and things like that. My palette is colorblind safe. I did get some good feedback about the contrast of the colors between the, the purple and green. So perhaps I, I should revise that slightly and, and maybe the, the notion of wanting to play on the fruit concept um, drew me to these light colours, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, like, the, of the lighter pale, pale colours, so I went down that route anyway. Great. Um, I think we have a couple minutes left. Did you, could you go in a bit more detail about the whole prep of the data and how you know, was it tricky or was the data pretty clean? Did you have any difficulties? Well, yeah, well, I won't slander the data set. <laughs> no, but <It> was, <laughs> like, what was your process? Yeah, um, it's, it's not something I naturally go towards. So it took me a lot of really digging into the different metrics to understand what was there. And the original data set is, was huge. And there was a number of columns and the problem in, when I was going through it, is you have certain dimensions there that were uh, captured every three years, every five years. Uh, there's a, a number of columns that would only be captured in the last 20 years. So you'll notice with my visualization, I say that it was from the year I was born, so, so the previous 25 years, um, because that was the most populated data. If you want to do anything over time, you really need as many marks in the different years as possible. And that was unfortunately not as common in some of the, the earlier years. 
so there was that and then the data prep itself so what i had done was built a tableau prep flow to to get to my original baseline level of data and what i would call that is i've cleaned up the the country names so if a country name's changed over time i had to readjust because in the original data we had this by region and i actually wanted to show this and by quadrant of the world so i actually recategorized each of the different countries as well as to build, build the tile map so all that had to happen prior and i would call that just general data transformation and tidying up and cleansing right and then you get to the point of view okay i've got to my final data set now let's look at how i can build these charts and what i want to build and what i want to showcase and then it moves into that element of, okay, I'm building these box plots. I'm, I'm creating different uh, scatter plots to, to see what the relationship between different variables are and what, what stands out to me at that, that moment in time. And then it's a case of, okay, how do I best uh, elevate what some of these metrics show in terms of, in terms of the storyline? And I ended up with three levels of, of detail, the overall continent, uh, then uh, different quadrants, uh, the continent of Africa, and then South Africa. And picking South Africa, the main reason behind that was I saw that they had such a high uh, literacy rate anyway, but it's still improving. And the whole notion behind my business is painting Africa in a really positive light. And so it would have been probably easier to tell a story about one that's not doing so well, but has a huge increase. But in fact, the notion of being like, okay, the reason it's really high but still increasing is this, this educational reform is looking at specific groups within South Africa as, as opposed to like a kind of a general country wide scheme to, to, to bring everyone up. Because I would say that's particularly even more powerful to, to have that. Nice. Oh, yes. oh, yeah, this is what I mean. I had so much spare time. I'm just chilling on stage. <laughs> um, can you tell me a bit more about the inspiration with the book that you read? I know you were telling me a bit about how you really wanted it to be positive because of how we perceive good and bad info. Yeah, Hans Rosling. Um, in fact, my, one of my old directors got me hooked and he sent me a YouTube video. of It's a TED talk by, by Hans Rosling and it shows it um, different metrics over time. And then I bought the book and the book is all about, we tend to, one, believe things based on past events and historical data and that kind of changes our perception and walks our behavior of what we think things are like. And so I wanted to look at the modern day and how things are, um, are actually a lot better than they were, say, 50, 100 years ago, because we've gone on some extreme changes, as well as, I guess, the, the notion that, that Hans Gosling mentions how we kind of overestimate the extremes. So when the good's going good, it's really good, but also we think the bad is worse than it is. And in fact, what you'll notice, especially within the violin, I feel that they actually look fairly similar, albeit the shape is different. They tend to sit in the same, same region, whereas I think people perhaps think that Africa is a, a lot further down in, in life expectancy than it really is. So I really wanted to play on some of those learnings from the book. Okay, I think you're both done now. Thanks Thank so much for <laughs> your time and for talking us through the, you know, the process behind how you came up with it. No, it's my pleasure, and um, it was such a fantastic experience. And I, well, I have to say thank you to the judges, the production team, and everyone involved, but especially yourself, Doris. I think there was a few moments of um, comforting the nerves as well as helping uh, practice and, and the feedback uh, along the, what was it, a couple of months now. It's, it was incredible, so a huge thank you to you. And I think... Um, we built some really strong friendships uh, within our, our time together, especially as well as with the, with the other uh, participants and supervisors.
Thanks so much. It was an honor. See you back next year. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you so much to CJ and Doris for walking us through CJ's final build. You can see all three of the finalists behind the build episodes on our YouTube channel or at tableau.com slash iron dash viz. You can also check out the finalist build over on Tableau Public, the world's largest data visualization repository. Be sure to stay tuned for qualifier announcements for IronViz 2023. And remember, win or learn, you can't lose.